Hey everyone, this is Kate, the uh, character designer and character artist on Vacant Sky Awakening, here to show you a little bit about how I go about making the character art and how the character designs developed for the game. Uh, so here we have uh, Dakota Malador, our main character in uh, Vacant Sky Awakening. We have a uh, rather dapper looking young man. Uh, so let me just open up some of the uh, stuff showing you the progress of these characters and then I'll show you some of the new work in progress. Let's just find Dakura down here. Um, so when we started with uh, Vacant Sky Awakening we knew it was going to be a prequel to Vacant Sky Contention and uh, I was told okay it happens 2000 years in the past uh, so it, it's kind of, it's a, it's a long way back. Uh, so <laughs> interestingly, um, you can see what happened when Bishop told me it was happening 2000 years in the past. I decided it must be in the Dark Ages and uh, designed the original Dakota design with this really uh, Dark Ages look inspired by kind of Viking, Anglo-Saxon sort of look with the big fur collar and stuff. Interestingly, a lot of elements of this character design did go on to be used in another character um, who joins the party, who you will meet later on in like a, a later episode of the game. Uh, but Bishop said no, even though it even though it's two thousand years in the past, the the world of Disparatus has developed quite differently from ours, uh, mainly sort of due to magical involvement and disasters and things. So even though it's two thousand years in the past, the look of the game will be closer to kind of. Um, more like a kind of... We decided uh, for the, the Orkan society to settle on a kind of Regency period look, which was helped by uh, Bishop showing me his original designs. And these are by Bishop, who is our main writer and uh, programmer on the game. He also does a lot of the heavy lifting with the mechanics design, but he's not that bad an artist. He wouldn't say that. He'd, he'd be like, oh no, no, don't make me draw. But um, yeah, he drew these a while back, so he had these lying around like ideas for how he wanted characters to look. We have uh, Dakura here, Naura and Corelli, and we'll discuss those in a bit. Uh, so his look for Dakura was this very dapper sort of look with a kind of tail coat and a cravat and things. And so I was just sort of... Oh, okay. Yeah, I can, I can uh, go with that. So, um, actually didn't change the design too much. I just made sort of adjustments to it. Some of the adjustments being sort of removing some of these uh, chains and streamlining it uh, down and others coming from sort of just sort of making decisions. So usually when I'm doing a character design, the first place I start is on the drawing board on paper. Um, okay, not on a drawing board, usually it's just me sitting on my floor with the sketchbook. But yeah, so it started on Dakura. He started out with quite quite similar to Bishop's original design with this wild kind of curly hair and uh, this sort of tail coat, which I sort of, I decided to lengthen it, give him a bit more kind of gravitas. I uh, streamlined the boots so that they'd be a bit easier to draw repeatedly because um, if you've ever tried drawing chains, they can be quite um, frustrating to draw repeatedly. And we didn't know at this point how the game was going to be made. Now, of course, we know that I'm going to be drawing Dakura repeatedly to make all the character out. I had to sort of think about um, concerns for drawing this character a lot of times. And on the same piece of paper I sort of sketched some ideas for what would become the designs for Corelli and Sarian, which I'll come back to later. But uh, yeah, um, I start out with this idea and um, gradually as I draw a character repeatedly, I tend to gradually make these little changes over time. Uh, some things I'm just like, 
Or just, just draw that a bit longer, or sometimes I don't even realise I'm doing it and then I go back to the original design and it's sort of like, wow, I drew him really differently to begin with. Um, so it's good to have a longish period to design a character because you can get your natural drawing evolution out of the way before you get to the point where you have to draw them consistently for game graphics. So we have sort of an early illustration of Dakura where I've left an awful lot of the detail off the boots and gone for this very streamlined look. Um, and you can see that as he's developed his hair's become more straight and neat. This was an interesting thing. These two here are actually drawn from the same pencils, but I decided to experiment with a more sort of delicate inking style closer to the look of the character faces in Vacant Sky Contention, which had this sort of fine-lined painterly look. Um, which we decided, firstly, it didn't really suit my natural style of drawing. I tend towards these thicker lines and a more cell shaded feel. And also, Dakura was a bit too pretty here. Coming up with Dakura's face was kind of a balance between making him... We wanted him to be a bit of a pretty boy because it fits with his personality, he's a bit of a flirt. Um, he's quite young, he's very good-looking and dapper and kind of hit with the ladies. Um, and also we know that a lot of our a lot of our players are female, particularly we found that with Vacant Sky Contention, we have a big female demographic playing the game, so we wanted him to be attractive to a female audience. But if we made him too pretty, it kind of makes all the male players want to punch them in the face. So we wanted to strike a balance between pretty enough that the girls will go, ooh, um, he's a bit nice, uh, and sort of want to, uh, want to draw him maybe in fan art and sort of whatever they want to do. Um, but not so pretty looking that male players feel a bit alienated and like the game isn't for them and like they can't take this character seriously. So um, by the end we've got this Dakura look. Um, now I'm gonna have trouble finding it again. I've got so many things open here it's getting a bit ridiculous. So by the end we have this sort of, he's quite pretty but not too pretty, he's got a cheeky sort of look about him. Um, you can see the cape has lengthened a bit to give him, he's got a bit of a kind of Sherlock Holmesy look or even sort of hinting at a kind of Grim Reaper. Um, the chain has lowered down to make that work, which sort of, it just lowers his centre of gravity a bit, gives his character a bit more weight and authority. Um, streamlined the boot design because some pe some people on the team felt that the early designs looked a bit heavy um, and also coordinated the sword to match the rest of the design. So that's Dakura, um, who was probably the easiest character to, to design, which is unusual. Main character is often quite difficult. I'm just gonna close the Dakura down to try to save some space. Um, so yeah, as you can see, early on I started on the designs for these uh, other characters. Um, let's open back up Bishop. Uh, so Bishop had other characters planned out. He already had something in mind for Naura, who we will talk about in a little bit and Corelli. Corelli is Dakura's right-hand lady. She's his sort of servant, bookkeeper, personal assistant, and kind of confidant. So um, she's also the youngest player character. Uh, and I saw her design and I was like, oh, I like that. That's It's a bit different. It's not really like something you'd see in an RPG. It's kind of got a period feel. Um, I just wanted to make it a bit more kind of main characterish. 
and also I saw the short hair and I just thought no the short hair needs to be Sarian um, I'll talk about that more when I get to Sarian but I just was like no Sarian needs to have the short hair it just fits and so Corelli needed to change hairstyle because it would get a bit confusing and not very interesting to look at if both of the female characters who start off in your party looked too similar so I gave Corelli this ponytail because it, it's kind of it's feminine but it's practical it highlights the fact that she's young and sort of innocent to give her this kind of girly girlish ponytail look um, and so Corelli if I can find her uh, where are you? There you are. Um, no, that's not the right Corelli. Where's the other Corelli? There's... Right, we've got her. Um, so the early designs were very, very much like, um, like the original. I, uh, just sort of changed a few details, like, to just not really even much. Did the new hair. I wanted her to have a very cute face um, that the player would really empathise with, um, sort of think she's cute and nice and looks nice to get on with. She's got these big dark eyes. Um, this was when I was already starting to decide on how Orkans as a race would look, which I'll go into in a little bit. Um, Corelli kind of helped to define how Orkans as a race were going to look because she came out quite kind of Asian looking. Um, and then for some reason the next time I drew her I completely changed a bunch of character design bits like the sleeves completely changed to these kind of uh, high gloves um, and the, the skirt became heavily simplified in terms of how many um, how many of these little seams there are, which was fortunate really because it turned out I was going to need to draw her a lot. Um, I actually started adding back in certain details from the older designs when I got back to her, so probably the simplest version of her is round here. And then in the newer versions, there's certain details like the frill along here has been added back in um, just to make her a bit more interesting looking. Uh, the skirt is also lengthened a bit more like it was originally. Um, so yeah, sometimes when I'm drawing a character that can happen and a lot of details can go. It's usually not a bad thing though, too much detail can be a bit overwhelming when you're having to draw a character regularly. So the final design of Corelli, um, you can see that the little frills being put back in um, and there's a frill around here just to balance things out. The skirt is just a bit longer, a bit uh, closer to how it was when Bishop designed her and have made the shoes a bit more comfortable rather than having the uh, buckle up here I've just moved it down to here more like a real shoe really um, but Corelli came out really well I'm really happy with her de design as a character um, so I'll just close Corelli and um, we'll talk about Sarian who didn't have a design from Bishop so it was kind of, so I was asking Bishop, so how should Sarian look? And he's just like, I have no idea. She's actually quite an important character in the history of the Vacant Sky universe as well, so it, it was quite daunting to design Sarian. Um, and so I, I started out, I'll just close down some of these, try to keep track of what I'm doing. So I started out with just this idea I just sort of thought, yeah, she's got short hair and she's got a long, thin silhouette to her that's quite sort of elegant looking, um, and that just sparked it. It was just the short hair and this long, thin silhouette, um, and I just thought, yeah, that's, that's how Sarian needs to look. She needs to be tall, thin, 
elegant, um, and it just went from there. Uh, so Sarian is um, Dakura's best friend since they were very young, they're the same age, they've grown up together. She is very, very intelligent, but kind of held back by what society expects from her because she's Orkan and Orkan society is quite, um, quite very much kind of a patriarchal society where women aren't allowed to do much. Um, and, and also she has got this, this disability, her legs are sort of mildly deformed, she can't walk very well because she had this childhood illness that nearly killed her. So the overall feel for Sarian needed to be that she is physically frail but intellectually very powerful. Um, the early design was a bit cluttered, I gave her this belt so she would look kind of practical and have things, places to carry stuff, and it was, it was just cluttering up the flow of her design, the boots were a bit clunky, sort of, the, the overall feel, it, it just wasn't quite what we wanted, but I really liked this short-haired look, um, and this kind of serious expression. She ended up with more of a severe face in the end, because it just kind of fit with her. So the second design, um, with just having this full-length, long, thin dress, and gradually the sleeves went up and the gloves became longer, which gives her a more elegant appearance. Um, the hair you can already see is starting to get sharper, the hair got sharper as we went along. This kind of very elegant face inspired by kind of Art Nouveau and kind of 1920s, an overall kind of old-fashioned elegant feel, um, which I just felt, yeah, that, that works, it kind of makes her feel like this elegant, lady, ladylike character, and quite different from much that you see in RPGs generally. I wanted something that was quite, that stood out. So Sarian's probably one of my favourite character designs in this game. Um, as I've worked with her, she's got more and more kind of bony and severe looking, because uh, I felt that really made her stand out especially as a person who has had a, a tough time of it physically. She's managed to survive this deadly illness, but she's not been left particularly physically strong by it. And the boniness kind of lent even more of a kind of elegant feel in a way, and a kind of this presence I'm just going to switch us over to Manga Studio, where I work on doing these character images, um, like the ones you saw before, because now we're getting into characters whose artwork isn't quite finished yet. Um, although Sarian's is in progress, which I can show you. So you can see this is an inked image, and how much more bony Sarian has become as I've been drawing her over time. Um, and the kind of the, the severity of the face and um, kind of really making her posture a bit more dependent on the stick, on her, her walking stick while sort of bringing the head up. Um, she, she was a lot of fun to design, I really enjoyed. Uh, Colour scheme wise, uh, you may notice that Decora and Corelli both had a kind of black and black, white, and blue kind of colour scheme which ties them together as kind of master and assistant, whereas Sarian breaks that by having this uh, this rich purple, um, kind of almost a, a villain colour scheme, like you'd get villains dressed in purple and green traditionally in comic books, so it, it brings up this idea of she is kind of the dark magician, she casts dark magic, she uses a lot of status magic in the game, she poisons enemies and debilitates them, uh, so we wanted that to stand out about her as well. Um, 
So now we get on to Naura, who is, um, originally Bishop gave me this as his original design. He did tell me with all of these you don't, that I didn't have to follow them, I just happened to like a lot what he'd done with these two. But Naura, uh, I was sort of, well I like the design, but not necessarily for this character because the more I heard about what Naura's personality was, the more I felt that this look didn't quite fit. Now Naura is a character you pick up uh, on your travels, she sort of attaches herself to Dakura's uh, party, um, taking advantage of the fact that Dakura is a huge flirt and can't resist just taking girls along with him, pretty much like any other like RPG protagonist, but it's a deconstruction. Much like a lot of the characters, if you've played Contention you'll be aware that many of the characters in Contention were deconstructions of characters you traditionally see in an RPG. So we have this mysterious girl who attaches herself to the party and has this mystical amulet around her neck. But in this case, she is doing this in a very kind of knowing way. Um, but we would, I was told that she's this mysterious character, she's very tomboyish and scrappy, um, she talks with this kind of cockney accent, uh, is very informal, and so I just felt that this, this look with the lace and the dress and things, even with it kind of hiked up to the knees, didn't quite fit for her. I wanted something that would stand out more, look a bit more wild, um, and that proved at first to be very, very difficult. I started out with this very boyish look, and with this kind of weird one-sided hairstyle, and a jacket, and it was sort of going places, but it wasn't quite balanced, I wasn't quite sure what I was doing. And then one day I just scribbled this idea down and just went, yep, yeah, that's it, that, that's Naura, just right there. It just, sometimes it just happens, you just draw something and it's just, yeah, that's her. Um, so I went with this, I lengthened the coat, which just helped give her that extra bit of character design balance, it just worked. Um, and I went for a lot of elements of stuff that was in fashion and seeing in fashion magazines at the time I drew it. So it's sort of, she's got the little shorts over these like chunky knit tights and these chunky boots with all buttons down them and sort of a, a kind of an almost a steampunky look and this really bright jacket. Um, some of you who've played Contention may be aware of the uh, joke about the uh, red jacket. You may know of the character Vel, who in many ways is a similar character na to Naura in that she's this mysterious blonde girl who attaches herself to your party. And uh, Vel wears a red jacket. You can equip the red jacket on any party member regardless of gender. So it became a running joke, um, and so, she, so Naura has taken on the role of having this red jacket. <laughs> Uh, which she wears, um, and the hair, I just decided to go for something quite modern and sort of a bit kind of 80s. I decided to give her this massive back combed hair and this gigantic ribbon in it, just sort of, I call it a wild card idea, and sometimes they pay off and sometimes they don't, sometimes Bishop's like, oh my god, Kate, what have you done, why, why is this character a hipster? And sometimes we're just like, well that's different but it works uh, and in this case that's what happened we just really liked this giant back combed hair back combed hair with this huge ribbon in um, and this kind of steampunky tomboyish look and uh, it just clicked with us um, now is the only character who isn't Orkan so I wanted to reflect that she is of a different kind of ethnic group in her face, so her face shape's quite different. She's got a much more European face with this more upturned nose 
and a kind of more defined kind of face shape, sort of deeper face, um, and a more pink skin tone, whereas the Orkans have quite a sallow, kind of more, more Asian skin tone. Um, and so back originally we were having somebody else doing character art, so I put a lot of time into like getting over how Naura's face ought to look, particularly compared to the other characters, give her this really interesting sort of heart-shaped face with the, the kind of pointed chin and things. So Naura was quite fun to design, um, and I was I was really happy with her overall look. Um, I'll just close that down. Um, but yeah, you can see the comparison of the different faces. When I was doing the battle portraits, that's when I wanted to put time into really developing the differences between the faces. It's a shame you can't see the other ones because uh, they kind of the characters you get in later acts really kind of diversify out the, the cast. But um, you can see with the Orkans, they all, all three of them have this kind of more of a sallow skin tone. They have a very sort of straight downturned sort of nose, quite a shallow brow. Um, whereas Naura kind of stands out with this, this upturned nose and the much more pink skin tone. She's more sort of Caucasian looking. Um, this is the kind of thing I, I actually put a lot of work into my character designs and trying to make make them the faces diverse and things. It's often at the top and feels like it's a bit lacking in RPGs, particularly kind of Japanese influenced or JRPGs. So um, I should show you how uh, how one of these artworks is put together. Uh, so I start out with the uh, rough. Um, is this whoa no do that right so you can see I start out with a, a rough sort of drawing um, in blue uh, sort of just because blue's the default for the manga studio which is a program I recommend by the by the way because it, it's remarkably cheap for what uh, you can use it for it's a great inking program um, so yeah I started out with this concept uh, and sort of, I don't know if you can see, but you can see there's a sort of slight glitching around the neck where I've just repositioned things just to make things a bit more uh, tidy. Um, then I'll do another pass of pencils, which is more neat. I'll just turn the, turn that. Oh, whoa, no, don't make new. Sorry, I am kind of clumsy. Right, so you can see I'll then draw over the blue. Um, I'll do the next pass of pencils, which are neater. I tend to do these in red out of habit, just, I don't know, I just like this dark shade of red. Um, and sort of neaten things all up. Uh, and then the final, I'll do a final pass of inks, which uh, I'll just remove those, which I'll again neaten things up a bit further. Um, and you end up with an inked image that looks like this um, using the pen tool. Uh, I'll close sorry and no I don't want to save that. Um, and so here we go with uh, Naura currently in progress. I've pretty much just finished on the uh, the kind of pencils for, for her. Um, so the next phase, you'll notice that she's facing the opposite direction and that's because uh, if you rotate invert, it's on flip horizontal, I'll flip it back to normal um, and now everything looks a bit wrong but I'll probably go back and get these eyes back aligned a bit better. Um, probably not while you guys are watching because uh, would probably be a bit tedious to watch, um, watch me repositioning all the eyes and stuff. But yeah, you can see a work in progress here and how Naura is coming along. Uh, one of the interesting things about Naura is that I've tried to make, as I've gone, she started off with quite, all the girls having quite similar physiques and I wanted to move away from that uh, rather than just kind of defaulting 
so Naura's a bit so she's got a bit more of a robust physique um, than the Orkan girls who are really quite skinny and a bit kind of uh, delicately built. I wanted her to have a bit more of a kind of bit. She's not she's not exactly chubby, but she's kind of she's got a bit more meat on her than Sarian and uh, Corelli. Just makes her stand out a bit. Works with her personality better. Um, gives her a reason for being bustier rather than just being like your typical kind of animu weeaboo kind of character who's like super skinny with like huge boobs. I wanted to avoid that as much as I could. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what a work in progress looks like and I should be finished on this one quite soon. I'll, the next phase will be to remove that layer um, just turn the uh, turn that down on this and then I will do things like I'll, uh, I'll probably start sort of just inking over my lines uh, with this uh, pen tool like this um, I'll just close that no, nope, don't save um, and then I would bring it back to Photoshop and open up uh, the yeah, let's open up character illos and I'll show you Sarian in progress. So yeah, you'll get something like this where um, this one's in progress. You can see I haven't finished the shading yet, but uh, that's the shadow layer removed. Just fill in the colours. Uh, colours are on a separate layer. Add in the layer for shading, which I'm currently in the middle of doing, so sort of just... You can see that it's it's on a multiply layer with um, using a sort of a nice deep kind of burgundy colour, which just... it makes the faces feel much more alive than shading with like black or whatever. Um, so that's, that's uh, yes, that's Sarian, she's coming along well. Um, so yeah, that is... Uh, bit about the character design and uh, art creation for Vacant Sky. Um, it's coming along nicely and I hope you'll consider backing our project so we can get on and start working on in-game assets and making the game. And thanks very much for watching!